2003, the Colgate Raiders became the first and only Patriot League football team to play for a national championship after going 12-0 in the regular season. That year, head coach Dick Biddle was named the Patriot League Coach of the Year and the National Coach of the Year by the American Football Coaches Association. The program produced a Walter Payton Award winner in Jamal Branch, five All-Americans and 12 All-League selections. It might be a decade later, but the special bond the players and staff built that amazing season remains very present in their lives today. You know, leading up to the 2003 season, we had had a share of the title in 2002, and we graduated a very good senior class, strong senior class. We had a special connection with each other, with the guys that were still on the team at that point. With the leaders that we had and the athletes that we had, we knew going into the season that we had a chance to make something special that year. We had a an athletic quarterback in Chris Brown. We had a Walter Payton Award winner at tailback. We had an offensive line that had two All-Americans on it, big guys, and we were very exceptionally fast and, and deep on defense. We had, you know, six linebackers. We had guys that, that, that were backup linebackers on that team that ended up in 2005 and 2006 being all Patriot League players. And one player that was Jared Nepper, who was just a backup linebacker and a special teams player. He, at that time, was not good enough to start at Colgate, and he ended up being an All-American. We had outstanding players but I think the key was, unlike nowadays, we had a lot of depth. If somebody got hurt, we had somebody to come in and stepped up. And a lot of times that person ended up being better than the other player because we had the depth. The timing was right for us, but what sticks out is that we came in and raised the bar on what we were expecting. Having never won a playoff game, we're breaking the huddle on the first days of camp. And Tem Lukabu had said, national championships and we put our hands up and we broke down the huddle every day of practice with that said. It was a quiet confidence. We were not boisterous about the whole thing, especially after the first game of the season, winning in the last play of the game. We won our first game. We went down and played Georgetown, won on the last play of the game. They weren't a very good football team and we struggled. Kind of had to show some grit and tough it out and you kind of sneak by with a win. Kind of lucky to win in the game. I think brought us back down to earth a little bit. We had to make some changes but the next week we played Buffalo. Playing Buffalo the second game of the season, playing a Division I FBS school and making a statement. And we put Jamal Branch in a tailback and he rushes for over 200 yards and I think we beat them like 38-6. to six. And at that point I said, you know, if we stay healthy and we can keep our heads on right, we have a chance to be a special football team and I told the staff that. And that's what we shot for and that's what happened. And it kind of is like a lesson, like if you want to get something done at a higher level, Set your expectations at that level and then do what it takes to get that done. Just as Colgate battled to beat Georgetown, the Raiders fought to earn a 45-38 comeback victory over Holy Cross in the final matchup of the regular season that November. The Raiders entered the playoffs with a perfect 12-0 overall record after earning seven wins and no losses in league competition. I mean, there's a lot of moments that you can go through after 12 wins in the regular season and then going 15-1, and but just bus rides and plane trips and the whole experience throughout the year was excellent for everybody. The chemistry was great throughout uh, the year. We were a very close-knit group and I think that had a lot to do with our success. The games at home were, were a lot of fun and it was great to be in front of the crowd. Playing on the surface, sometimes on the on the muddy, slick surface, as a defensive back it wasn't the greatest situation in the world. But being at Florida Atlantic, Brian Anderson jumped a curl on the sidelines and just made a big time play. We locked in a victory at that point. We were going to national championship. He made a big play jumped a curl. That's an aggressive play for a corner to make. I remember he dodged a couple tackles and I remember running to throw a block for him. You're like, we look like a, a darn good football team right now just getting this done. The victory at Florida Atlantic gave Colgate its 21st straight win over the course of two seasons, marking the longest winning streak in Division I football at the time. We were a good in every phase of football. I, didn't, I don't mean great, but we were good in special teams. We were good on offense and we were good on defense. And when you do that, you have a chance to win every game. There are a lot of teams that are great on offense but struggle on defense and vice versa. But we are a good, solid football team in all phases, and we found a way to win a game. Sometimes it may have been the defense that played great and the offense struggled. Sometimes your kicking game turned the game around. Sometimes your offense outscored everybody. But I just think it was that. But I also think it was the attitude that the players had. They love playing football. They love being coached. It was just a special group that came together at the right time and everything worked out. We had guys who demonstrated how to be a football player, how to be a person in general on campus. And I think that is one of the most important things that Colgate and Colgate football has taught us. I remember them now as kids, but then when I see them, they're grown adults or whatever, and they talk about things that, you know, that their interpretation of me and my interpretation of them, and sometimes it's funny for them to think that, you know, I got on a player and now we're close friends and you do anything for them. You know, you call them knuckles, as a coach, you got to get on them. But, but the key to me is 
not only their friends, but to see them how they matured and how much winning football and how much that's affected their life. That's something, you know, you can talk about the rest of your life. You played for a national championship and, and they'll have that bond and they'll be friends for the rest of their life. And that, that doesn't happen very often. And that's the thing about sports and about playing at Colgate. But that's the thing about that team. They'll always have that identity and they'll remember it and they'll be getting together in reunions 20, 30 years down the road. And they'll be talking about things and they'll be making up things about how good they were or whatever. And I think that's a great part about it. Ten years after leading Colgate to a national championship, Dick Biddle has announced his retirement following 18 years of coaching in Hamilton, New York. In 2013, Biddle steps down as the winningest football coach in both Patriot League and Raiders history. For the Patriot League Network, I'm Melanie Plowski.